This is Fons hey, van Laar. Fons, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you're the individual who does the demonstrations in the museum for the press. Right. Yes. The etchings, right? Well, Fons, tell us a little bit about the creation of an etching plate, if you will. Yes. Um, in the time of Rembrandt, they worked uh, on red copper. You can see there a red copper plate. And these are the three trees from Rembrandt. And uh, actually, in this uh, etching, Rembrandt used the three basic techniques that they knew in the 17th century. He used the copper engraving technique, uh, the etching technique, and the dry point. Uh, in short, you could say that the copper engraving is the oldest technique. It started in the end of the Middle Ages. It was for very popular in the Renaissance. Uh, Albrecht Dürer, Lucas van Leiden, they are all famous uh, engravers. You carve directly into the copper plate. Um, that is really a craft that you have to learn. It's a lot of work. And uh, around 1550, they discovered another technique, and that is the etching technique. That is uh, this plate. You have a copper plate, and on this copper plate, you have a coating. We call it etching ground. It's a kind of wax. It's wax, resin, and tar, actually. But it's a soft coating in which you can scratch your drawing, like this. So you have to imagine that Rembrandt drew the trees in the wax. He didn't carve them into the plate. Then the whole plate will be put in an acid bath, and the acid bites actually the lines in the copper, and the wax is uh, resistant against the acid. So the acid etches the lines. So that made it easier, and a lot of painters, they liked to start uh, to make etchings because it was not that much of a craft on itself anymore, like the engraving. And the third technique is the uh, dry point. And the dry point is nothing more or less than a scratch on the plate, like this. And then if you do this, you get a superficial line, less deep than the etching or the engraving, but you get a burr on the plate. Mm -hmm. And if you rub the ink in this kind of line, it stays around the burr, so you get a velvet character of a line, like you can see here. Here you see, in short, the three techniques. Mm -hmm. This is the dry point with the burr. Here you see the copper engraving. The lines are the deepest. You can make more than 200 or 300 prints from an engraving. Mm -hmm. From an etching uh, with the different biting times, you see it here. Mm -hmm. You can make about 75 to 100 prints, and the dry point only about 20. 10 to 30 prints, you could say. Because the burr wears down. The burr wears down, yes. it can break off, it can fall right. back. Right, right, yeah. uh -huh. okay. And you like to combine the techniques, yes. that was quite special. And uh, you can see that in the three trees. Before I go printing, I would like to show that. This is the etching technique. You use copper engraving here, dry point. So that is uh, quite special. Ah. This is the ink. The ink is on oil basis. And you Cover, first you cover the surface with the ink, like this. The technique didn't change so much. Uh, in the 17th century they used, of course, this self-grinded ink. You see that I have a heating plate here. Of course Rembrandt didn't have a heating plate like this, but he would also warm up the plate in a kind of uh, stove on a kind of uh, what we would call barbecue these days. <laughs> it's like uh, charcoal in a bowl with uh -huh. a grid on top. It's because the ink is more flexible if it's warm and it's easier to wipe the surface. So now I start the wiping. So now you want to get the ink deep into the grooves. Yes. This is uh, muslin or cheesecloth. Mm -hmm. And with this you wipe the surface. So you're cleaning off the surface now so yes. those areas will not print. Exactly. In negative areas. Sometimes he would leave a little bit of ink intentionally on the plate, would, wouldn't he? To yes. create tonal areas? Yes. They call that uh, plate tone. Um, sometimes uh, if you want to have some atmosphere, if you want to have atmosphere in, for example, a landscape, he mm -hmm. would leave the air a bit light gray. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is, uh, that's up to the taste of the printer, okay. you could say. Yeah, right. I guess you can see the image is coming out a little bit yes. now. Mm -hmm. I guess the printer has to stop on the right moment with the wiping. Mm -hmm. Because if you clean too much, you take the ink out of the lines. Oh. And if you don't clean enough, you get this gray tone, the play yes. tone. Right. So that's an acquired skill, I would imagine. Yes, uh, every etching, yes. you, should uh -huh. get, uh, you should get used to an etching plate and then you know how to clean it.
Uh, Rembrandt, he liked to uh, continue on an etching. He, he altered his plates sometimes, and that we call the different states of a plate. So uh, you can imagine if you want to make an etching yourself, you can imagine you, you start with a drawing, maybe you start with the outlines, or you start, you start with, uh, yeah. Uh, you don't make it, uh, maybe you don't finish it uh, completely the first time. Uh, you make some proof prints, and then you think, oh, I want to continue. Right. So you can put a wax again, an mm -hmm. etching ground, mm -hmm. and then you continue the drawing. Mm -hmm. You change it. Then, yes. Mm -hmm. And then you can call it a second state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Rembrandt went up to sometimes eight or nine states yes. from one plate. Uh, right, right. Now it's almost ready. But the final cleaning is always done by hand. Uh -huh. So this is the wiping. All right, moving over to the press. Can you tell us something about this press? Um, yes, this press is uh, an exact reconstruction from a 17th century press. And uh, so, it's, so it's only two or three years old, but it, this is exactly the way that Rembrandt would uh, print. It's a very simple wooden press, but it does the job very properly, as you probably know. Now it's time for the paper. The paper is humid. It has been soaked in water, so it's, uh, it's not really wet, but it's damp. You see? Now the, this is felt on the paper, and the pressure of the press should press the, the plate into the paper and the paper has to go into the lines and takes the ink out of the lines. Well, it was hand and footwork in that time, so like this. And you, you need the foot because of the yes, force required. Yes, just to keep going. You should never stop on a metal uh -huh. plate. Uh -huh. So it uh, enables you to continue. Come over and take a look at the impression now. Now is the moment of the truth. <laughs> Will there be something on the paper or not? Or not. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on how well you wiped, right? All right. Let's take a look. Oh. All right, there we go. Well, what do you think? I think it looks okay to me. <laughs> you can see the plate and the impression pulled from the plate at the yes. same time. Now, this paper has to dry for uh, at least one day, one or two days, just to make sure that the ink is really dry, because it's on oil basis. Mm -hmm. And in the 17th century, they had the habit to, to hang it like this first, and later they would press it. Sometimes they would also put it on the press, like you see here. Right. And. Uh, yeah, as I said, from one cup of plate you can make about 75 to 100 prints and from one time inking you can only make one print. So every etching is uh, hand printed and there could be small differences between the prints.